Hello and welcome everybody, I am Brandon, and we got a buttload of Square Enix news to talk about today. So it sounds like Square Enix is about to sell off a large sum of their American studios and IPs like Tomb Raider off to the Embracer group for a measly sum of $300 million? We got all that and more on another episode of Game Corner. Thanks for watching everybody, if you like what I do, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more, and I'll stop wasting your time. So like I said, it sounds like the Embracer Group is about to be purchasing pretty much all of Square Enix's American studios from them for a measly $300 million. That would include everything from Crystal Dynamics to Eidos Montreal, even Square Enix Montreal, and that includes about 50 of their IPs, including Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, Legacy of Kane, and, and way more. The news was actually announced early yesterday morning when the Embracer Group dropped this press release saying, We are thrilled to welcome these studios into the Embracer Group. We recognize the fantastic IP, world-class creative talent, and track record of excellence that have been demonstrated time and time again over past decades. It has been a great pleasure meeting the leadership teams and discussing future plans for how they realize their ambitions and become a great part of Embracer. For the uninitiated, Embracer Group is actually a giant publishing label. They actually own a bunch of different studios and companies. They actually just recently bought Dark Horse Comics. And they actually own a bunch of other development studios, maybe some names you might know like Gearbox and THQ Nordic, Saber Interactive, Kosh Media. And really, that's just the tip of the iceberg on how big Embracer Group is getting. They go on to say in this press release, After closing this transaction, the US will be Embracer's number one country by number of game developers and Canada will be number two. In total, post pending closings, Embracer will have more than 14,000 employees, 10,000 engaged game developers, and 124 internal studios. Embracer's upcoming content pipeline includes more than 230 games with more than 30 AAA games. This acquisition will bring additional scale to Embracer's current AAA segment, and Embracer will have one of the largest pipelines of PC slash console games content across the industry, across all genres. So it goes without saying that this seems like a pretty lowball price to be paying for something like Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal. I mean, Sony's in the process of buying Bungie for $4 billion right now, and even though this is on a much smaller scale than something like Activision Blizzard, you would still think that somebody like Crystal Dynamics dynamics would be worth a bigger chunk of change here. Well, thanks to Daniel Ahmad over on Twitter, we got a little bit more insight into maybe why Square Enix is making this decision here. He says, the short of it, SE Western Studios have underperformed over numerous titles. Its biggest growth areas in the past year have been from JP Studios, smartphone slash MMO. SE was looking to offload Western Studios for a while. Embracer is paying the full amount upon completion. He goes on to say, It's worth noting that these expectations are always backed by something tangible, and in Square Enix's case, it's the cost associated with running the studio plus developing the game. In layman's terms, they spent too much and got a low return. So like Daniel Ahmad said here, they just weren't making as much as their Japanese division was and it made more business sense for them to cut ties with that section of their business than to keep going on with it. According to IGN, now that this deal is going through, we've actually gotten a lot more information about like what Tomb Raider has sold over its lifetime. And this might sort of key us into why Square Enix is cutting ties with one of their biggest American franchises. So 38 million copies sold since the reboot of your franchise 10 years ago is not exactly a terrible number. I would think most publishers would honestly call something like that a success. But compared to the monster that is Final Fantasy, in Square's eyes, I think this sort of thing's just not cutting it, I guess. This doesn't even begin to get into something like Deus Ex, which sold a more than honest 12 million copies. Once again, not crazy numbers, but for a double-A cyberpunk stealth game based off of a franchise that only white men over 40 know about, genuinely not terrible? So why the hell is Square Enix doing this? Unfortunately, the answer isn't as surprising as you would think. Square Enix says Embracer acquisitions allow it to invest more in the blockchain, AI, and the cloud. So we've actually covered this on the channel before. About a month ago, the CEO of Square Enix published this really weird letter to the public, pretty much talking about his interest in NFTs, the metaverse, the blockchain, etc. And this seems like a really easy way for them to cash out on a branch of their business that they've been pretty uninterested in for a while now, and then also being able to take that money and invest it in this 
weird new future that their CEO thinks is going to happen. They don't really get much out of the deal, but they can cut ties and then not really have to worry about it anymore. So what's next for Crystal Dynamics and Eidos, and what the hell even is going on over at Square Enix right now? Obviously, as far as this Embracer Group acquisition is going, we're kind of just going to have to wait and see what happens. That being said, I do think that this might end up being a better fit for them than Square Enix, who hasn't really been appreciating them for a very long time now anyway. On the Square Enix side of things, though, it's a little bit muddier. Jeff Grubb over on Twitter explains it as, 300 million isn't a lot. But Square Enix was clearly out of patience and ideas for Crystal Dynamics and Eidos. They tried Tomb Raider and Deus Ex, and then they tried Marvel. In 2021, both companies barely broke even. Square is cutting and running. But it's also impossible to look at Square dumping some fairly valuable IP outside of the context of the current market. This does leave Square Enix far more streamlined for potential acquisition. No idea if that happens, but it's more likely today than yesterday. And honestly, I'd be inclined to agree with Jeff here. While we can't say for sure that this means that they're gonna get acquired or they're trying to get acquired in any way, shape, or form, we can say that this is a pretty weird and interesting move on their part for not much gain. It definitely makes me think that they have like something up their sleeve here. That being said, if we did see an acquisition, I could obviously see PlayStation as being a solid choice to go with here. And seeing as how they could probably get them on the super cheap right now, it almost makes sense. That being said, it would be a pretty big bummer for people like Nintendo, who have been also working with Square for a very long time, and you'd be pretty much leaving anybody on those consoles out in the cold. Anyway, we're kind of just going to have to see what happens next. It's pretty baffling that Square just is selling off these studios for little to no profit and it definitely seems like they're trying to set something up in the works here anyway that's about all the news i got on square enix today guys i'm brandon this was game corner thanks for watching and have a kick-ass week